Death, like the inevitable realisation that maybe putting a huge TV on a finance plan with an extortionate rate, is something that can hit you incredibly hard if you spend too long thinking about it. It's something that will unfortunately happen to all of us, and indeed to the very universe itself. The slow tick-tock of unseen hands pulling us all towards a distant midnight on existence. However, that's not to say that we should go so gently into that good night, my friends, because life is worth living after all. And if you need some good role models to show you how to stick it to death, then just take a look at these 10 video games that didn't just slap away the Grim Reaper's bony claw, but actively rammed a fist down its throat. For in video games, even death itself can be overcome thanks to boss battles and, of course, that lovable, incomprehensible logic that the medium is so famous for. So let's teach the end of life what it is to be afraid of death with these 10 video game examples. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that let you battle death itself. Number 10. Death, Castlevania Death is such a fixture of the Castlevania series that it's actually surprising when it doesn't show up to roll some bones with the protagonist. However, you can't talk about this Death Daddy without paying respects to the first game in the series, as in this 1986 classic, Death acts as a kind of second-in-command for Dracula himself. And you know what? He's an absolute mare to beat. This sleepy spectre won't come and clobber you directly, but instead summon scythes which will whirl around the stage in an attempt to turn Simon into salami. But what makes this even more challenging is that death often moves out of range of the holy water, and the whip is so short that it often means risking heavy damage as the scythes home in on you. Other interpretations of death in this series might be flashier with their attacks and presentation, but the sheer horror of watching it slowly float towards you is one that will stick with many gamers for a long old while. Number 9. The Grim Reaper – Persona 5 Persona 5 is such a monstrous game that it actually comes as no surprise that you and the rest of the Phantom Thieves can take on the Grim Reaper itself. I mean, after all, you can do so many other things, so why the hell not? However, you might want to slow your roll a little and set that cat car into creep mode as, as the Reaper in Persona 5 is no joke. If you dawdle in the mementos area for too long, you might begin to hear the rattling and scraping of chains. And if this is the case, get out of there! Because this audio cue signifies the Reaper is about to appear, and once it does, it will stalk the player throughout the level until it catches them. The battle itself can be brutal because the Reaper has several high-level abilities, ranging across nearly every elemental type, and of course, he can use a skill that has a medium chance of killing the entire party instantly. However, notice I said it can be brutal, for if you return to battle the Reaper during flu season, it'll be significantly weaker and can even succumb to despair, which will kill it in three turns. That being said, the original battle, well, that's going to push you to your limits. Number 8. Death – Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen Death is something that you're actually quite used to in Dragon's Dogma, seeing as the opening section sees you having your heart ripped out only to continue chugging on. I don't recommend that you try this in real life, as, as it's only video game logic that allows the Arisen to keep on living here. However, Death itself isn't going to be too happy with this inversion of the laws of nature, and is a boss that you can encounter quite a few times in Dark Arisen. Now, you might look at the slow-moving nature of the Grim Reaper and think that this will be an easy task, however, let it be known that one hit from its scythe is enough to not only kill you, but if it hits your pawns, it will remove them from the game world. And to help set you up for this almighty wallop, Death has a lantern that can cast sleep on you, meaning that you'll be able to do little except watch Death crawl over and knock the spirit right out of you. Number 7. Death the Grim Reaper – Dante's Inferno when Death itself is the opening boss of a video game, you know that you're in for a rough ride, and Dante's journey through hell is indeed anything but a pleasant experience. Still, before he can even get to the gates of hell, he's got to go through the bouncer to the club, aka the Grim Reaper, who damns Dante's soul for the heinous actions that he committed during his life. Side note, by the way, I love his face when he's trying to convince the Grim Reaper that all of that killing was okay, because the bishop said so. Battling this fearsome foe is quite the spectacle, seeing as it takes place on a collapsing chunk of Earth as it plummets through reality itself. The Reaper will attack you with spectral blasts and huge sweeps of its scythe. However, things take a massive turn when, after weakening Bone Boy here, Dante rips the scythe from its cold, dead hands and uses it to cleave the Grim Reaper in two. 
What makes this all the more satisfying is hearing the harbinger of death itself cry out for mercy before being split down the middle. Gruesome fun indeed. Number 6. Dastardos Viva Piñata now, you might look at the Viva Piñata games and think that everything was just going to be all sunshine and cuddly candy-filled friends, but there is one figure that will send a shiver right up your sparrow mint, and that is Dastardos. But you know what, really his name should be Bastardos, because he's basically the Grim Reaper of Viva Piñata and will come and bash any sick piñatas in your garden like an absolute swine. His design is actually really frightening, and seeing him glide menacingly towards a dying mouse mallow will have you screaming at the TV for him to bugger off, and sometimes it'll even come down to a race between this red menace and the Doctor to see who will get there first, and these moments have more tension than an Evo Street Fighter final. Now, technically, you can't actually beat him such the force that he is, but you can channel your inner shovel knight and prang him on the head a few times with your gardening tools, or you can stick a scarecrow of sorts that keeps him away. However, he will always come back because he will never tire. Spooky. Number 5. Death Gauntlet For a game without traditional video game bosses, Gauntlet still manages to be a truly challenging experience. From start to finish, you will be swarmed by mobs of the undead and other mythical beings as you traverse the ever-deadly dungeons. However, in amongst all of the ghosts, sorcerers, and thieves, you might notice a little chap clad in a dark robe with that all-too-familiar bony smile. Yes, that's right, death itself has taken a tour of the dungeon in order to seek out adventurers and tear pieces of their soul from them. Popping up random the death sprite will move towards the player and latch onto them, not letting go until they've drained a significant portion of their health. It is an absolute nightmare to try and kill them as well, however, if the player can kite it into a workable pattern, they can fire off a bomb potion and kill it in one shot. Yet, 9 times out of 10, you're gonna get grabbed, and there's no escaping its clutches if that happens. Number 4. Hades – Final Fantasy IX while most of the bosses on this list are about the physical embodiment of death itself, Hades from Final Fantasy IX is actually a rare example of not only a boss named after the god of death from Greek mythology, but is also an example of a foe that was brought back from the dead after being axed as the original main villain from the narrative. That's right, Hades here, who can be found by heading round the back of a rock in the Ocean Room of Memoria, was actually planned to be the final boss of the game, but was scrapped and relegated to hiding out down here in shame. However, it is worth seeking out this super boss, because not only is his design utterly brilliant, but because he offers an excellent reward for beating him. Taking the life of this former Lord of Death opens up a special shop which stocks rare items, and some of the best armors and equipment for the party in the entire game. He'll even synthesize two pieces of pumice pieces, which can teach the Ark Summon whose Eternal Darkness move is easily the most over-the-top attack in the game. So cheers, Hades! Number 3. The Reaper – Brutal Legend Ah, brutal legend. What could have been, eh? Despite not living up to everyone's expectations, don't worry, my parents share the same mentality, this Jack Black video game vehicle did actually boast some truly impressive moments. You can't deny that screaming around a metal album cover-inspired world and a flame-shooting hot rod wasn't fun, nor was the likes of hearing Lemmy and Ozzy belt out vocal lines as supporting characters. And the enemy designs themselves were amazing, towering beasts, head-banging moshers, and of course, death itself riding pale horses, and also wearing wireless headphones. The Reaper is an enemy that pops up in the campaign that specializes in making infantry units' lives a nightmare, or what's left of their lives after it barrels through them with their spectral weapons. Catching them is hard enough as well thanks to their high mobility, and when attacking in numbers, it means that most foot-slogging units are completely done for. Hell, you can even get this incredibly cool unit on your side should you choose to play as the Drowning Doom, even letting you ride on horseback and getting a chance to swing that mean-looking scythe. Number 2. Grave Lord Nito – Dark Souls it would be remiss of me not to talk about the big daddy of death when it comes to the Dark Souls universe, wouldn't it? After all, with players preparing to die so often, they're probably pretty well acquainted with Grave Lord Nito, who serves as Lord of the Dead and was the first being to come into contact with a Lord Soul. This hulking mass of bony body bits takes up residence in the catacombs of the giant's tomb, and thanks to his ever-increasing army of Grave Lord servants, spreads death and sickness throughout multiple worlds, all of which feed back to him. 
And as you can imagine, with all of this influence, Nito isn't exactly a pushover, and when the chosen undead encounters him to siphon his power to fuel the Lord Vessel, well, it's a rough ride from start to finish. What makes this battle so tough is that a lot of his attacks are infused with toxic, meaning that you'll likely be taking huge chunks of health and having to battle this status element. And don't be fooled into thinking that you can hide and heal because he'll send his minions right up after you and blast the arena with a powerful death wave attack. However, if your metal is strong enough, you can send this femur farther six feet deep. Although, strangely, death is still a thing after his defeat. Not sure how that works, but then again, this is Dark Souls. And number one, the Wraith, Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown, as you can probably tell by the art style alone, is not a title that does anything by half measures. Everything in this high fantasy side-scrolling brawler is over the top, and acts as a love letter to both item management fiends and fans of mythical lore. Therefore, of course you can battle death itself, this time known as a wraith. The party can encounter this floating god of death as the boss of Castle of the Dead Route B, and it will uh, likely mop the floor with you on a first run, seeing as it's completely invincible. The narrator even warns you of such and encourages you to escape the room. However, that doesn't mean that you've left the wraith behind, as now he will chase you through the stage until you can light holy shrines which finally expose his weak spots. Even then, the boss battle is no joke, as the Wraith will summon endless undead hordes, freeze you in place with ice magic, and then carve through you with its monstrous scythe. This boss is ranked as one of the hardest in the entire game, so you best stock up and train hard if you're to even attempt taking it head on. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that let you battle death itself. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further about all things to do with video games, TV, film, wrestling, whatever else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I do loads of live streaming and board game stuff. I'm at the moment playing through Fallout New Vegas with tons of mods, and it would be great to see you over there. However, before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about death, and as I said before in the intro, it is unfortunately something that will happen to all of us, but I just need to make this as clear as day. Just because somebody is gone does not mean that their legacy does not live on within you. If possible, remember to not live in their shadow, but use them to elevate you upwards in your own life. The lessons they've taught you, the love that they've given you, all of that is important, so don't spend your life thinking about people who do not have theirs, and instead, go out there and make the best of yours. Big love to you, you massive ledge. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.